You guys already know that North Naperville Autos is the number one dealer of used cars in the Chicagoland area, but they are now offering shipping on all of their online purchases. That's right, if you buy a car at North Naperville Autos online, it'll be shipped directly to your front door. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2003 Subaru Impreza WRX wagon. Up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged flat four and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here WRX for a couple of reasons. Mainly the fact that it is a wagon. I haven't done a wagon before. The second reason is the fact that it's this awesome yellow color. And the third reason is that I recently drove a brand new WRX and I'll share some thoughts from that video and this one a little bit later on. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachBradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form and you get a video just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that flat four under the hood, making 227 horsepower. Well, it's actually a pretty good horsepower number. And this is a very interesting part of Subaru's history. The WRX and Impreza name have kind of been intermingled in the past. This is a Impreza WRX, but now the Impreza and the WRX are two separate cars. Will they come together again one day? Maybe, it's a real Ross Rachel situation. So the WRX was actually a higher trim level of the Impreza during this era, and so it got that two liter turbo, later a 2.5 liter, while the normal Impreza got a naturally aspirated engine. Like I said, it makes really good horsepower numbers, and it sounds great, it drives great, you really feel the boost. Love it. The actual engine driving experience is very, very Subaru. There's this big fanfare to it. It's nothing, nothing, nothing. Then you get the boost. Then you get the power. It's this big pop. It's this exciting moment. And I love that about this car. However, like I said, paired to it, four speed automatic. And I do think that this is harming the car's fun quite a bit. Shifting this car is like asking a lazy teenager to do its chores. I was just about to do it, I swear. And then it never does, and then it does at weird times. It's up at three in the morning making a peanut butter sandwich in the kitchen. It's just a whole moody teenager situation. So I think that that kind of does overall hurt the feeling of this WRX. With a manual one, I can put it into gear and say, yes, this is what we're doing and the rest of the car will follow suit. Well, this kind of has a mind of its own and not a very focused one. Last but not least about the Impreza WRX, of course it is all wheel drive. It has Subaru's symmetrical all wheel drive system, which is one of my favorites. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. On the left is my fuel and coolant temperature. In the center is my speedometer, and on the right is my tachometer. Very, very basic and simple gauges, and you'll realize that throughout the rest of the interior. It's very basic. The steering wheel is a factory Momo steering wheel. Now Momo is a performance brand that builds steering wheels and harnesses and seats for tons and tons of makes and manufacturers, but Subaru actually got them to build theirs for this car. It feels nice, seems to have held up pretty well over the last 19 years, so no complaints. Off to the left, I do have my fog light switches and cruise control, as well as a climate control vent. And on the door, I have my lock and unlock and power windows. Moving into the center, I do have a little digital clock up top, and then I have two climate control vents and a pop-out cup holder. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Impreza WRX wagon. And just like every other pop-out cup holder in existence, this unfortunately fails the big friggin' bottle test. Not a surprise, but hey, it's still a fail nevertheless. <laughs> then we do have a aftermarket radio. Now what's interesting about this era of Subaru 
was that the radio was still an option at this point. Now, it was a rather cheap and entry level option, but it was an option. And so a previous owner of this vehicle has since put in a different radio to modernize it a little bit. Then I do have my climate controls again here. Very, very basic. Temperature off to the left, fan speed in the center, and where to send it off to the right. As well as I do have a big sliding trap door feeling thing for the recirculating slash venting, which is pretty run of the mill. Then I do have my ashtray and cigarette lighter here in the O3. And I get a little cubby down below that, which brings us to our shifter. Again, the shift knob is a Momo product. It says Momo with Subaru under it. Kind of nice dual marketing there. I love the look and feel of it. It is very fast and furious boy racer early 2000s style but hey that was part of the style at the time can't really fight that then i do have a dead switch and my power mirror options very very nice and i have the handbrake off to the right then i get a center console and then the seats are finished in a similar fabric found to what was on the door again very late 90s early 2000s boy racers need for speed style seats which i actually quite like and they do have higher bolsters than what you would normally find in other cars in this segment meaning it holds you in a little bit tighter however i am a big guy and i'm still fitting comfortably is not always the case. The Civic Type R or Focus RS are a little bit too aggressive for me. So the seat is quite the middle ground. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2003 Subaru Impreza WRX wagon. And this is really a point of the car that I don't like. I don't fit back here very well. My knees are hitting the seat in front of me. My head actually has an okay amount of room. I can feel my hair starting to hit the ceiling, but that's okay. That's not that big of a deal. Most cars are like that, but it's always just super disappointing to me when I see wagons like this. Subaru is the king when it comes to bad back seats in the 2000s and late 90s, really. It looks like on the outside, there should be plenty of room back here, but once you step in, there's really not. It's very deceiving. And that's kind of the big letdown of this car. These seats are finished in the same material as the front seat. I don't get a center console or anything like that. I don't get my own vents back here. However, there's okay airflow from the air conditioning. It's not the worst in the world. Overall, not a big fan. I would rather not sit back here if at all avoidable. Let's go hop around back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space. Then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Impreza wagon. Just a little handle here, lift it up, and there you go. Now, you do have plenty of cargo space. This is a huge, huge benefit of the wagon. So you do get not only the higher roof line, but you get a lot of space back here. And that's part of the reason why I dislike the rear seats so much, is I feel like they could have moved them back an inch and would have solved a lot of their problems. But hey, I'm not a designer in Japan. So we do have a cargo cover that you can put in like that. Very, very nice. You don't get many other amenities. You can pull this up and you do get some storage down there, which is very nice. However, something I haven't quite seen before is a Subaru branded toolkit. So you get your tow hook and your little tire iron right there. Very, very cool. I haven't seen this. And this looks to me like a pouch from like the 70s, which is kind of unique. Kind of cool to see in the back of this WRX. Impreza wagon, whatever you wanna call it. But there you go, that is the rear cargo space of the Impreza wagon. And I think it's actually very, very adequate and definitely a strong part of the car. Now we gotta talk about the looks and how can we not talk about this yellow color? I mean, how iconic, how in your face is this color? I love it, love it, love it. I don't know how it'll come across on camera, but to me, if you live at least here in America, it looks like American cheese color. It doesn't look like mustard. It's not quite banana, it's not mustard. It's American cheese. And I think that that's hilarious. However, I do like the wagon look. I like the wagon style. It gets these sort of weird ellipsed windows at the back. It's just a very interesting look. And I actually really like it. I think this car could really only exist in this era if they sold something as brash and brawn as this today i don't know if it would work as well or have that sort of adorable style to it but it's a product of the early 2000s the time period of which i was six or seven years old and so to me this car is a very special place in my heart but now let's get on to my final thoughts what do i think driving 
the 2003 Impreza WRX wagon. Well, first of all, I love driving it. The driving experience is pretty good. I would try my hardest to find this in a manual transmission. I really do feel like that four speed auto is kind of strangling the car. However, that's my only major complaint. I love how special and unique and fun this car is. When you hit boost, it actually feels like you hit boost. It has this sort of monumental moment where it's nothing, nothing, nothing. And then the hero starts to fight back and you get these great noises. And the reason I bring all of that up, because like I said, I just drove a recent WRX. It didn't have any of that. It was very business casual. That car doesn't know when to let its hair down or more importantly, when to put its hair up. This car does, it's fun. And especially in this yellow color, it's flamboyant. It's in your face. It makes that weird Subaru grumble that is so synonymous with boxer engines. It has weirdly shaped windows at the back. That's strange. Your Honda Accord doesn't have that. Your Toyota Camry doesn't have that. That's what I love. You know, there's this saying for more indie cities like Portland and Austin of keep Austin weird, keep Portland weird. There should be a t-shirt that says keep Subaru weird because this to me is the best kind of Subaru. I like it being strange and kind of in your face, driving past these people, they're staring at it because it looks like the sun on wheels. It looks like Velveeta cheese morphed into a car. It looks like a sunflower exploding with four wheels. That's what I love about this car. It's different, it catches your eye, it makes you feel something. Where the new WRX doesn't. They've lost their way, at least here in 2022. There's no pizzazz. This car has pizzazz and I love it. I really, really love it. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their Subaru Impreza WRX wagon. I've always wanted to drive one of these and this is my favorite color that these came in. It's absolutely undeniable when you look at this. That's all thank you to North Naperville Autos. They do offer financing, they offer shipping, and they are Carfax certified. So you know you're gonna get the best deal possible when looking for your next vehicle. So definitely check them out. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.